Well, welcome everyone to another Wednesday edition of Virtually Tasting, our featured Foggy Noggin Beer of the Week. Tonight we're drawing our uh, our Irish Red Ale. You know, we just had uh, St. Patrick's Day, and um, the Irish Red Ales are not just for St. Patrick's Day, they're for all year. They're really good all the time. Let's kind of dive in it, because we've been doing this beer for a long time. It's a 5.5% alcohol by volume beer, 33 international bittering units, IBUs. We've got uh, a color of a 12 SRM, so it's got a nice dark um, reddish, brownish, amber hue to it. Um, you can see light through it, but it's got a nice um, color to it. Um, we have four malts. They're all from our favorite uh, British maltster, Crisp. We've got their Maris Otter, 88% or 29 and a half pounds. And we've got two pounds of Chris, Crystal 45. Um, that's the color. 45 is the color level bond of your Crystal Malt. Two pounds for 6%. And then we've got one pound of their Crystal 120, which is a much darker Crystal Roast, for 3%, and one pound of their Roasted Barley. And that's going to give us some nice, rich, dark colors to it and some a little bit of roastiness, too. Uh, we mash it at 153 degrees for one hour. And then we sparge it with 170 degree water, and we collect all of our sugars in our boiled kettle and boil it for one hour. And right when the boil starts, we add five ounces of UK Goldings, and it gives us 33 IBUs. That's the only hop addition in it. We add uh, some Irish Moss when we're at uh, the 20 minute mark left in the boil, and then we transfer into our fermenter um, at 65 degrees and let it rise to 68. We're using uh, the White Labs 002 Fuller's Yeast, and our water profile is Edinburgh Yeast from uh, not not in your row. Dublin from Ireland. Sorry about that. And so uh, 68 degrees for seven days. It's taken out of the fermenter. It goes through the cold conditioning and our secondary fermentation at 32 degrees. And that's where all the yeast and any sediment left in the beer will drop out. Then we keg it and we force carbonate to one and a half volumes. As you can see, it's uh, it's got a very. It had a little bit of a head when I poured it, and it's it's. Um, reside it down. Um, I poured this beer about 20 minutes ago. wanted to warm up just a little bit because uh, we serve everything. All of our beers kept at 40 degrees to keep it fresh. So let's take a little smell of this beer. I'm getting some nice uh, bready tones, a little bit of roastiness. I don't pick up any um, hop character at all. It's got a nice richness to it. Let's take a taste. Up front, a little bit of sweetness, a little toffee, um, toffee-like taste. Um, just a touch of, uh, it's got a nice bready character to it. Just a hint of um, roastiness. And it lingers on with a, a very light sweetness uh, that fades to a nice dryness. Uh, it's it's not a hoppy beer at all, but it's the, the hops are gonna take, it'd be really sweet if it wasn't. Um, it's got a nice, full flavor to it, um, very satisfying. I think this would go really well with a lot of dinners too. I think it would go great with um, rich foods, so anything with um, you know, Ireland, so I'm sure it goes, they would probably say it goes great with corned beef or stews and things like that. I think it would go good with uh, steaks and barbecue and um, meats of all kinds, but it doesn't have to be meat, it could go well with um, just by itself is really good, but it goes with cheeses, um, maybe a heartier fish. Uh, I think it'll go with turkey too. Well, when I was in uh, Ireland in 2010, um, I hadn't brewed this beer yet, and when I tasted Smittix, which is probably the iconic Irish red. Um, brewer in Ireland, and I just really, really like that beer, and um, learning after I brewed this beer on how they do it. We don't do it quite the same way they do it. We use a whole different hop profile, but I think the taste profile is very similar. 
we're getting a little bit of buttery, now as I'm tasting more, a little buttery um, character up front. So it's like a buttered toast, um, grainy character to it with that um, little bit of slight roastiness in it. So uh, I think it's a great example. I think it's, uh, it's a little heartier than a lot of um, Irish reds are going to see um, in America. A lot of them are going to be much um, lighter in color, less roasty, and much hoppier, hopper, hop forward. And this is going to be a classic Irish red ale. So it's a, I think it's a very easy drinking pint. Um, it's got great subtlety and flavors on it. Um, it's really, really dish delicious. It's got a soft, I'm thinking soft toffee, caramel, sweetness up front, and that's really, really nice. Um, so uh, when you think about the history on, on uh, this beer, so Ireland's got a long history. So you think about stouts and porters, that's really what you think about for Irish beers, but the Irish red ale is really important beer, and um, it really is uh, the interpretation of the English bitter by the Irish brewers, and uh, they're hoping that adding a little bit of roast and color would add some, some dryness, not be as sweet on the finish. And I think that it really is a great beer, and it, uh, it, um, it holds up to lots of other beers. It's a great one to have in your lineup, so you have a good variety of different beers. So. The Smittix is the one I think that uh, really um, you would know and you can probably find that and you may want to pick up some of that and pick up some growlers of this this weekend so you could maybe do a taste comparison with what I think is probably the, um, the um, Irish red ale that is being made and I think this one holds up really well to it. It's five and a half percent alcohol so typically um, Irish red ales are going to be in Ireland you're going to get about 5% with the high end and uh, bittering up to 28. So we're a little bit higher on both of those um, than what I think the guidelines would be for that beer, but um, I, I don't think I would change a thing. And I haven't. We've been brewing this thing for this beer for at least 10 years, maybe in our 11th year because we celebrated our 11th anniversary two weeks ago. And so we're on our 12th year of, uh, of doing business. So we've been brewing this beer for most of that time. I'm going to flip this camera around again so we can maybe answer some questions. This is always the fun part of it, to try to do it without uh, dropping anything and Okay, I think I'm a little crooked here, so we can straighten out a little bit. So we've got uh, Zach and Jason. Yes, Zach, it is Chief Lightfoot. Thanks for bringing that out. I forgot to mention that. Would this mix well with Christmas duck? Well, you'd get a lot more roasty character out of it if you do it, and I don't think that would be a bad thing to do. I think that... Um, Mixing with Christmas duck could be an interesting experiment. I have not done that. It is it is one of your favorite beers, Zach. I'm glad it's so easily to, to drink. And that Dublin water pro profile is what we use for the water and it, uh, it softens it up and it brings that elegance to it. it makes it a very approachable beer. It's gonna be available uh, for growler fills on Friday and Saturday, four to 5 p.m. Um, $16 a growler fill and that beer is um, gonna be uh, so if you go to the foggy noggin brewing.com website and hit the beer tab all the details are there so the story on chief Lightfoot is uh, he was actually a real chief that was back in the days when uh, the Stanford University um, were called the Indians um, he was their mascot, and he was a real chief, and he volunteered his time to uh, wear his full um, adornment of um, authentic Indian um, um, clothing, and he would be on the sideline as their cheering of the, the team during their games. And he did all for, for his own um, desire, and he really enjoyed doing it. And so 
Um, it's kind of interesting that you would have a, a real Indian chief that would want to be on the sideline um, as cheering on a um, college team, but uh, kind of cool. And, um, you know, he, I think he, I, I don't know exactly, but when he no longer was doing it, I think he had ill health, and then uh, the name changed to the Stanford Cardinal. The color red, and yeah, the color of the shirt I'm wearing. But it's a, it's a great beer. Um, I, I like it just the way it is by itself. Um, you know, uh, you can mix it and try things, but um, if you want to try getting a little more roastiness, Christmas Duck might be a great beer to, to do a little bit of uh, blending with. Delicious. Really is. And, uh, you know, five and a half percent, it's... Um, it's got some depth to it. It's got some body on it. It's um, it's not a wimpy beer, but it's a very easy quaffable beer that you can drink several pints of this and um, really, really good. I do, as it's warming up, I'm getting more of that little um, buttery, caramely, toffee taste up front, and I think that's a really great taste, and it's very enjoyable. Tastes really, really good. I like the finish. This finish is one of the... Um, I'd say less dry finishes of the beers. I think the, the sweetness fades a little uh, slower, and so it stays a little sweeter in your mouth for a little bit longer. But then when it's gone, it, you've got a great um, dry finish when that um, all fades out. But it, it really is. It's, it's a beer I always look forward to um, when we bring it back each time, and it's um, it, we don't have a definite uh, date that it's released on, but uh, we bring it out at least once a year. Um, sometimes twice a year and then the the big the big uh, brother to this beer is Big Chief and when that comes out that's all bottled in 22s and it's the same recipe but it's uh, bumped up so it's a really big beer it's a uh, I think it's 8.2 percent but all the ingredients I gave you are the same except we add a little bit more hop so it's a little bit hoppier to dry it out a little bit more at the finish but uh, this beer is just fantastic and I think this would be a good one for this coming weekend for Easter weekend this would be a great beer to have because on Easter you know you're probably gonna have a lot of people having uh, ham and lamb those are the traditional uh, dishes for Easter meals and this will go really good with those I can't think of uh, any mixes that I've done with uh, Lightfoot but um, now, if you wanted to, what's on tap right now for us, I'm trying to think what might be a great uh, combination. So um, we've got Beaver and Duck and Lightfoot will be on. And then we also have uh, Mark, the MLK Alt. And then we've got um, Butch's Brew. And we've got um, Diablo. So if you wanted to hop it up just a bit, now I try a little Diablo... Um, Lightfoot blend. If you wanted to get a little roastiness, you might want to try the Christmas duck. Now the Butcher's Brew might be kind of interesting because you're going to get a little of that nutty character in there too. So you get might get a you know the you've heard the movie The Nutty Professor. You would get the Nutty Irishman maybe. So um, something to, something to think about. So the the malts all from Crisp. And Crisp is a great maltster in England. Uh, we got their Maris Otter, Crystal 45, Crystal 120, and Roasted Barley. And 88% uh, of the Maris Otters, 6% of the Crystal 45, and 3% each of the Crystal 120 and the Roasted Barley. And then we only have one hop edition, the UK Goldings, 5 ounces, at the 60-minute mark, and it gives us our 33 IBUs. Dublin water, uh, a little softer. 153 degree mash in, and it's gonna give you just this delicious glass of caramel sweetness, toffee, bready tones, just a hint of a little um, uh, roastiness on it, but uh, it's, it's delicious. Friday and Saturday, curbside pickup, four to 5 p.m., growlers only. To pre-order them, go to the FoggyNogginBrewing.com website and hit the beer tab. All the details are there, and we look forward to seeing you guys. Tomorrow night, we're doing a, another version of our Happy Half Hour. 
we got some piano, some music, some songs, some just good old time. It's the official star of the weekend. So join us on Facebook Live tomorrow, 5.30, and join our virtual happy half hour. And we hope to see you guys this weekend for some curbside pickup. And thanks for joining us, and everybody stay safe. Cheers, everyone.